I opened my eyes. Nothing. I began to blink, looking around for anything in the immense darkness that surrounded me. Nothing. A small shiver went spiraling down my spine. Where was I? The cold air loomed upon me as I slowly descended into a panic. The revelation washed upon me. An incredible horror realized. I didn't know where I was. I didn't know who I was. I began to think of the past, but I only ended up drawing a blank. My memory was fuzzy, and I could only vaguely remember anything. I began to look for any kind of explanation in the back of my mind. I attempted to think of my personality. Would anyone I know want to put me in this situation? What manner of a guy was I before this? I attempted to scream, yelling out for anyone who may have been in the distance, but only a whimper managed to escape my throat. I coughed, but my throat was incredibly dry, and only a tiny, raspy voice managed to speak. Feeling around, I only managed to hit some dirt and something metal, something sharp. I could only feel one wall, covered in moss, but it seemed to be that all the other walls were out of my grasp. In my attempt to stand up, I discovered I was shackled to something, perhaps a wooden pole. It didn't matter anyway, as I appeared to be too weak for standing. I dropped down to my knees, resting in the dirt and stone. I was stuck. As I lay in the dirt, I began to realize that I was going to be trapped here longer than I thought. I was alone, in a room with only my thoughts. My thoughts seemed to be my worst enemy in the moment. My imagination was running wild with new ideas, each worse than the last. What a painful life it was. I began to search for new ideas in the back of my brain, but I gave up and I went for a much simpler thing to think about. Where the hell was I? The first answer to pop out of my head was not a pleasant one. What if I was dead? Was this the afterlife? Alone in a room for all eternity. Just to sit here until your own thoughts tore you apart. Or perhaps this was hell. Then the question came back to me. What kind of person was I before this? I began to look at myself, thinking, was I a person deserving of this? What if I was? Could I have been that ungrateful that my fate was to be stuck in a box? What if a maniac was holding me here? While it seemed unlikely, my thoughts jumped to conclusion after conclusion on why I was stuck. My worst fear was realized when I put my hand to my chest. Blood. I started to panic, my eyes widening as I realized the blood was mine. It was emitting from my stomach. I had an incredibly large wound. A stab wound. It was a clean cut into my lower stomach. The blood wasn't coming out fast, but it was just enough to soak my shirt. It was recent. Suddenly, both theories started to make sense. And suddenly, it seemed like the truth was dawning upon me. But suddenly, I didn't want to know the truth. If I truly was dead, would I just have to sit here for all eternity? What kind of life was that? What if a murderer was holding me here, waiting for the right moment to strike me? What if I was insane, and this was their method of curing me? If I was insane, why would I be in this kind of condition? In the moment, anything seemed possible. I sure felt like I was going insane. I began to feel cramped, despite all the room around me. I couldn't breathe, like my panic was clasping at my throat. This truly was an endless torment. I knew in the moment that this would end up being my fate. It was the ultimate punishment. I was going to turn on myself. Our own mind will always be our worst enemy. I stuck my head down on the stone. Now, all that really mattered was that I was going to die here. I started crying, a whimper echoing through the hall. I tried my hardest to think about my life. Was it a good life? To me, it seemed like I had lived my entire life unknown to the fact that death was lurking around every corner. 
I never truly appreciated what I had. I just ignored all the good things in my life and I always wanted more. I wondered if I was truly successful, or if anyone loved me, or if I had a family. I tried not to think about the rest. If I did have a family, they would be worried sick. A sharp pain began to form in my stomach. In my mind, I knew I had someone to come back to. I couldn't give up. People were worried about me, right? Someone out there had been looking for me. I needed to get out of here. I needed to make it back. In this moment, it didn't matter if I was dead or insane, or even being held captive. I just needed to get out. If I had a life to live, a life to complete, death was my worst fear and, and I wasn't going to let it grab hold of me. I began to tug at my chain, trying to pull forward, but it proved to be pointless. I didn't care about the truth and I wasn't afraid of it. The truth is something we can never avoid, and we are going to have to live with it, no matter how horrible it is. I wasn't ignoring the horrible truth in my life. At the time, it seemed like in my past life, I did ignore the truth. I cut corners, trying to avoid that big black blob of horror that was hiding in front of me the whole time. I enjoyed staying in a fantasy land, where all the problems would just vanish as I continued my life. I think we all did that. It was an idea that worked. An idea that continued to push us forward until the very day it didn't work. The day where the truth confronted us. Today was that day for me. I was going to escape and confront the truth in my own terms. Even if this was hell, or just a psycho's basement, there had to be a way out. Even if it was to some more torment, anything was better than this. As I pulled forward one last time, I let out a shriek of pain. My leg began to burn of agony and my chest started to explode of pain as well. The pain was a sudden wave of agony and I couldn't take it. It began to dawn upon me that my ankle was twisted. It was pushed into a position of unimaginable pain. Was it my own doing? or perhaps the work of someone else. The pain then started to become incredibly unbearable. Everything seemed like it was on fire. I couldn't take it any longer and I began to succumb to the torment. No, I began to think to myself. No. Suddenly, I began to feel dizzy and rather lightheaded. I felt my vision get blurry, even if everything was darkness. I began to realize that I wasn't going to make it. I had given up so easily in the moment. I rested on the floor one last time and began to drift off. It felt like I was floating. Floating through the darkness. When I woke up, I coughed out blood. I didn't know what was happening to me. Everything just seemed so painful. I felt like a giant ball of agony drifting through darkness. I couldn't even feel the floor and it was right there. At moments, I feel like I can see someone. A man opening a door, looking at me with a knife in his hand. I can no longer tell what my imagination is and what reality is. Everything just seems like a blur now. I saw the balls of light in the corner of my eyes, and I knew they were there. I wasn't going to pretend they were just my imagination. I could see them. I could hear them. They speak to me about death. They tell me that I'm going to die. Don't even get me started on the hands. The hands were agony. To feel them squirm on top of your face and not even be able to see them was torture. Some days, they were all over me. I can even hear the whispers. Horrible, indescribable whispers which sliver into my ear, planting ideas inside my head. The snakes and bugs take some getting used to but that's not to say they aren't annoying. Time is impossible to keep track of. My mind tells me it's been a couple of hours, but it feels like months. Imagine staying in darkness for months. Just imagine it. Think about how your thoughts can turn on you, how they can rip you apart. Think about it. Just think about it. It surprises me how quickly I've given up. What once seemed like such a simple task now feels like an impossible dream. I was right. 
My imagination was my worst enemy. Sometimes I lie here, wishing I could die. But deep down, I know that isn't the truth. The truth really is that none of us really want to die. We all say we can accept it, but honestly, we all have that fear. We have the fear of knowing. We don't want the truth, but we need the truth. We'd rather be happy, stuck in our own fantasy land. Only a couple of hours ago, I thought there was nothing to be afraid of. And now I know that there are some things in this world that we need to ignore. To bury inside our subconscious and continue life without it. The truth is terrifying. We should never know the truth. Stuck down here, I should know. I don't want to die, I thought to myself. I don't want to die, I repeated in my head. I took a deep breath as the tears rushed down my face. I could see the light. I really could see it. A glowing red light at the end of the tunnel. I closed my eyes and I was ready to embrace death. Whatever happened, happened, and whatever it was, to my liking or not. I didn't know who I originally was. But in the moment, it didn't matter. It honestly didn't matter. I was going to have to face death right then, and we all are going to have to face death someday. No one can deny that. It's just part of the truth. It amazes me how much I've discovered in my agony. Even if I didn't know who I originally was, I felt like I had learned something about myself. I was ready to die. My hands clenched, a rumbling happening around me. Everything felt different. Until it happened. What was that? I began to remember that I've heard that sound before. Somewhere in the back of my mind. Was that a... A man sat down, grief upon his face. He hadn't known what he had done. A few hours ago, he had hit a man inside a train tunnel. At first, he honestly didn't realize what happened. He stopped the train, looked into the tunnel, and dialed 911 as fast as he could. When the cops arrived, the entire railway was shut down, and after a thorough examination of the tunnel, they found the body. He had been run over by the train. The train conductor realized tears were rushing to his eyes. He honestly didn't mean to do it. He had no control. He was going to have to live with this grief the rest of his life. The cops were confused. They didn't understand how a man like this could end up in a train tunnel. Or even stuck in a train tunnel. He was suffering a major wound in his chest and a twisted ankle. They couldn't draw any positive conclusion, but they didn't recognize the man. The man was a part-time crook who lived on the streets. He was kicked out of his house a couple months back and resorted to crime and drug use ever since. The cops didn't know anyone who really knew him that much, so they didn't have a lead on anything. Poor funeral this one's gonna get, said one of the cops as he wrote something down. The conductor still couldn't comprehend the events, and the grief was too much. The horror of reality struck every bone in his body. A terrible life and fate this one's to come to, he thought to himself.